Hello guys, this is part 2 of BGT. On this video, we are going to talk about how does the BGT work and the usage of it. So let's start with NPN transistor. And as I said before, the largest area called collector region. And the smallest one called base region. And the last one called emitter region. And we want to operate this transistor in active mode. And if we want to make this operation happen, we need to make the junction 1 in forward base. And that happens when the E is connected to the negative terminal and the P is connected to the positive terminal. And that forward potential called VEB. And we have to make the junction 2 reverse bias. So the C is connected to the positive terminal and the base is connected to the negative terminal and this reversed potential is called VCB now we have junction J1 forward bias and junction J2 reversed bias and that's what we need to make it in active mode so let's analyze the movement of electrons in the BGT so at the beginning when we don't have any volts applied to the transistor we have VB is equal to junction J1 and J2 and we have to analyze what happened to VB once we applied the volts. So after applying the volts, junction J1 will be in forward bias, so the potential will reduce and the new potential will be VB minus VEB. On the other hand, junction J2 is reversed bias, so the potential will increase and the new one will be VB plus VCB. Now after knowing the potentials, we can easily analyze the movement of the electrons and the holes. So because of the reduction happened in junction J1, the electrons will move from the emitter region to the base and recombined with the holes in the base region. And as I said before, B-type semiconductor materials has more holes than electronics in it. But there is something important you need to know. That the base region is very small and it's lightly doped. Because of that, most electrons pass to the collector region and very small amount of electrons from the emitter will recombine in the base. I'll have to say it again, the most electrons will pass junction J2 to the collector and very small amount of electrons from the emitter will recombine in the base. So let's assume n is the number of electrons pass from the emitter to the base region and the collector region. Out of which 1 minus alpha n combined with the holes in the base region. And alpha n is moved to the collector and that's what happened only 2 to 5 percent of electrons combined in the base and 95 to 98 percent pass to the collector and there is one more thing happen when we make bipolar junction transistor in active mode and it is the reversed saturation current junction j2 is reversed bias so there must be reversed saturation current and that saturation current we can call it ICO. Now we can have a relation between the current running in the branches. IC is equal to alpha times of IE plus ICO. This is the value of IC. We can have a relation between IC, IE and IP because we know the movement of electrons so we can know the movement of the current going through the, the region or getting out of it. And if we applied the Kirchhoff flow, we will find e, IE is equal to IP plus IC. And these two equations is very important and you need to know it. Now we are going to talk about the usage of transistor. It can work as a switch. Well, yeah, we can use it as a controller in the circuit. 
by making it in cutoff or saturation mode only as shown in the picture. The second usage of transistor is amplification. Well, yeah, we can use the PGT as amplifier by making it in active mode only. Thank you guys for watching. Please hit a like if you enjoyed it. And don't forget to subscribe.